and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Emmy. <laughs> and um, today I think I'm gonna do a story time video. Uh, yeah, I've been meaning to do this, but it's taking me a while actually. Um, so I'm gonna tell you the story about how I broke my femur and how I got into my car accident. Fun stuff. Um, yeah, so basically, um, this past summer, which it is actually, now it is January of 2019, I got into a car accident on July 27th of 2018, so a little over five months ago, I think, I don't even know if that's right, but yeah. So I am basically now just getting over the broken femur thing, so it's healed, well, kind of, but um, yeah, uh, I have a titanium rod in my leg and I have three screws <laughs> um, two are in my knee and one is in my thigh but now in about five days I am going home to Maryland and I'm going to get one of the screws taken out because they accidentally made one of the screws too long for my leg so <laughs> or too long for my knee so yeah I have to go get that one removed because it's like really annoying and it hurts like a lot but yeah, uh, I should probably tell you how I broke my femur and what happened, but yeah, let's just get into it. So, um, I was actually, let's see, okay, so right now, if you didn't know, I live in Los Angeles. Um, I just moved out here in October for a makeup school. I go to MUD, it's called Makeup Designery, and yeah, so I started in October, but prior to that, which is in the summertime, um, I had just graduated high school just that past May and well June I guess but um yeah um it was like the end of summer kind of the middle of summer and eh. but um yeah uh it was July 27th I was going over to a friend's house um I was going down a highway kind of it was like a two lane highway just like one strip that goes through my county uh there's a neighborhood that was off to my right and i was in the left lane and there was a car also in the right lane but there was an older gentleman and he was coming from the neighborhood from my right and he did not look and he just pulled out in front of traffic and just pulled out in front of my car and yeah so the lady who was in the right lane ended up having to swerve off the road and the car just ended up in my lane. It was just timing and I T-boned him going probably about 55, 60 miles an hour. So yeah, I was going pretty fast, but that is speed limit, so I wasn't going over the speed limit, so I was being safe. Um, I ended up T-boning him and the power of my car and him and like stopping me like, right in front we like pushed off into a median so like an intersection um so like up a hill kind of like in a grassy area but yeah after that um a car accident everyone asked me what it feels like to be in a car accident um i like the only way to describe it is like a movie i don't even like like it literally was so fast it was like a blink of an eye and there was like a car in front of me and then like it was a crash and it was just like so loud like all I can describe it is it's just like loud like I mean like our car, my car hit his and it was just like so like the amount like you imagine like cars hitting each other like it's just so loud and it was just I don't know it's crazy but yeah as soon as I hit like I stopped and like I didn't realize what happened but I like was in shock so my radio had tuned out so it was like whatever that sound but that was kind of scary just to, like think about but yeah um radio went out um I didn't know what had happened but I was just like sitting there kind of like stunned and I was like scared but there was like a car in front of me and his air his airbag deployed so I could like see like his his window was just like his airbag so I couldn't see like who was in the car I didn't know like there was like kids in the car I didn't know if there was I don't know who was in the car I just like had known that like we just got into a car accident and my airbag deployed and I don't know why but I threw my hand up in front of the airbag and so I had like bruises on my hand but um protected my face <laughs> I don't know why I did that but yeah um my airbag deployed I had my windows down so they said like probably if my windows were up I probably would have hit my head on the side of the door or something but I didn't because my windows were down so there but 
yeah then i just immediately i just like needed to get out of the car it was like my first instinct was that like i need to get out of the car like something could be wrong like i like i just need to get out of this car and so i went to open my door so like i grabbed the handle and i like went to open the door and I had what well, little did I know I broke my leg so I broke my femur if you don't know what the femur is your femur is your thigh bone so this is long is my thigh and I snapped it right in half um, I was in shock so at first I didn't like know anything but I knew there was something wrong and then as soon as I tried to move the pain just it just hit me it just was oh my god it was there but I opened the door and when you have a broken femur you can't walk on it so I ended up falling out of the car onto the ground and at that point it was like so painful I cannot even describe how painful that was it's the most pain I've ever felt in my life just breaking your femur getting into a car accident my like chest felt just like I was just in shock and I was just stunned and I was in pain and I was on this ground I couldn't even I didn't even know where my phone was and I just started screaming just I was just screaming in pain and yeah it it was it, like scary like I just I can't even describe like in that moment I just you just don't know what's wrong with you you know what happened but you just don't know what's wrong I literally, I kid you not, I thought I lost my leg. I mean, when you, it's just, it was like such an undescribable pain that I could feel the top of my hip, but everything below was like almost numb. That's why I said I like felt like I lost my leg was because I couldn't feel anything other than like pain, clearly. I could just like feel the pain of like my leg. But I couldn't, like, feel anything. Like, I couldn't, like, if I touched it, if someone touched it, I, it just, like, wasn't there. That's what it felt like. It felt like I could see someone touching my leg, but, like, it just, like, wasn't there. So I was screaming. The lady in the car next to me, like, on the right side of me, like, when she had to swerve out of lane, she came and helped me first. So she heard me screaming, just, like, help and stuff. But, um... I asked her, like, I was wearing pants, I was wearing, like, flowy pants, so I couldn't tell, and, like, we, no one had, like, rolled up my pants to, like, see if my leg was still there, but, um, she helped me, and she was trying to calm me down, and then, like, more and more people were, like, coming to the scene, and I was just overwhelmed, and I stayed conscious throughout the entire thing, but, um... I was still like laying on the ground like the sun was beating on me it's like summer so it was like very hot outside um I was like sweating I was on the ground like I was all muddy I like my leg was turned out the other direction so when people were coming to like see if I was okay they clearly knew there was something wrong with my leg because it was turned out and another reason why I thought I lost my leg was because I was laying on the ground and just imagine like laying there and all you see is like your thigh and it's like don't be all gross and stuff but like it's like bobbing up and down kind of and your the end of your leg is just turned out the other direction just unnatural and yeah so I just thought it was thought everyone was lying to me and I thought it was disconnected but there thank god it was not it was still intact but um people were telling me that I had broke my leg and that I still had it they told me I like was still there but yeah more and more people showed up to the scene um the lady who was in the car next to me she ended up finding my phone and calling my mom and my mom was actually at a restaurant which was down the street it was like five minutes away and it was just kind of like timing it was like weird because my friend Haley um she was actually at Outback at the same time as my mom and so I guess when my mom got the call she was sitting like with Haley almost and so both of them ended up coming to the scene of the accident um that's probably the worst thing ever because I would never want my friends to see me like that because I was definitely a mess I was screaming I was I couldn't even cry because I was in shock but like the fear in my face and like the sound of my scream was probably traumatic for anyone to see especially someone who knows me so um yeah so my two friends Haley and Elena ended up seeing it I'm really sorry I love you both um I'm so sorry you had to see that but yeah um so once my mom got to the scene I was still laying on the ground no one had moved me because like you just don't know you don't know like if there's anything wrong with my spine you didn't we like we just didn't know anything and we were waiting for like the paramedics the ambulance or really for like everybody to get there and at this point 
the gas of my car started leaking and yeah we could just smell grass until still to this day i cannot take the smell of gasoline and grass it's like the weirdest thing but like if someone is mowing the lawn and i can smell the gasoline from like the lawnmower like cutting the grass i just it makes me sick it just brings back memories it makes me sick i hate it i probably will never get over that but yeah just that smell is just what i was and then like i don't know i was just smelling that the entire time so it was just i don't know terrible memories but i was laying there and the gas we could just smell it leaking so it was just like it was like time to move me like we just needed to get me out of that spot and like thank god the paramedic showed up the ambulance showed up and they were all trying to figure out a way to get me onto the stretcher without kind of like moving my leg hurting me anymore hurting anything else like we still don't know what's wrong so they ended up like doing this super fast they put a neck brace on me they had three men and they picked me up in the position that i was in kind of so my hip was rolled out i was rolling underneath the car because we were on a hill and they scoot me up and they put me on the stretcher how i was and Again, I really apologize for anyone who was at that scene and everyone else because when they did that, it was just very painful and I had to scream in pain. That's just all I could do. So, yeah, it was not a good time. But um, they ended up putting me on the stretcher. They had to secure me kind of enough to get me onto the ambulance so that they could use this nice little machine or whatever it was, not a machine, but this contraption of a brace kind of it connected to like the end of my leg and to the top of my thigh and they had to pull my leg so that my femur would be straight so yeah i don't know what that thing is called but it hurt a lot but yeah um as soon as i got into the ambulance they drugged me of course um gave me dilaudid if you know what that is you know how strong it is yeah so they just started giving me that and they kept asking me like lots of questions like just in this moment it's just so many things are happening at once and like someone's asking you your name and like your birthday and if you're like allergic to anything if like, it's just like so overwhelming and i just couldn't even answer these questions that were like something that you should be able to answer in like 0.2 seconds and of course like i have alopecia universalis so that is why i don't have hair um so people's first instinct is oh my gosh like she probably has cancer people always think that people always say that so i don't know they were probably like didn't know who i was didn't know what i had blah blah i just i had to like be like i have alopecia i have whatever like this like i'm not sick like just they know because like you go into the hospital as jane doe and they don't know who you are because there's no one there to identify who you are because i also had to get airlifted so i got medevac to the hospital so i don't know crazy things they had to get all my information kind of enough to drug me and get me to the hospital safely so yeah they ended up stretching out my leg in the ambulance so they just took it and they pulled it because my leg it was like okay so like if your bone is like right here i'll try to like show you my leg was kind of like that so my bone was down so they had to stretch it out so it was like back to where it's supposed to be if that makes sense but yeah they ended up doing that they ended up securing me in this ambulance and they drove me to a field which was like right across it was actually at a school i used to go to the school fun fact um i went to the school from like kindergarten to like sixth grade and my aunt worked there and like all my old friends go there and my brother graduated from there so it was literally the accident happened right across from the school but we ended up driving over to the school to their field and that is where they landed the helicopter and yeah, at this point, I literally didn't know where my mom was. My grandparents ended up coming to the scene as well. So everyone was there. Um, fun times. But um, yeah, and it just like backed up traffic all the way down the highway. So yeah, that, oh gosh. But anyway, um, I ended up like just in this ambulance with these random people, which were of course paramedics and stuff. And so they ended up I ended up getting out of the ambulance and I was seeing, I saw my mom and I saw my grandparents and they all said they loved me and there I went. They just put me up in this helicopter. Um, I've never ridden in a helicopter before this, but my f pilot and my people who were in the helicopter with me were very nice and um, 
I don't know. I, they, I just literally, it, that ride felt like so long, but I know it was only like 15 minutes, but I was also like on drugs. So I was just, and all you do is like look up in the air. Like I was just like staring up at this like helicopter ceiling and I was like, not trying to like look over, but I could like see that we were way up in the air and yeah. So, I mean, it was just really loud in the helicopter and like everyone had like these the goggle or goggles uh these earmuffs on and like i didn't have any earmuffs so it was really loud but yeah um we ended up landing and immediately once we landed uh they took me to the trauma center and uh, yeah from there it was just event after event after event i'm sure my mom was freaking out i don't even know how someone can drive to the hospital which is 45 minutes away from where we were because they had to take me to a trauma center um but she had to drive all the way there and apparently she was calling my dad, she was calling my brother, I mean everyone was calling everybody. By time like I was in the air, I didn't have my phone clearly, my mom took it with her. Um, all my friends had figured out and everyone was of course texting my phone. Um, I didn't have it but everyone was concerned about what had happened, no one knew what happened. Literally all, the only information they had was that I got into a terrible accident, T-bone. I was getting medevaced to a trauma center, and yeah, that's everyone. That's, that's the only thing everyone knew. So no one knew what happened. Everyone knows my something happened with my leg, but it was just at that point no one knew and no one could find out because not even my mom was there. Like I was literally got to the trauma center and immediately went in and they just started like hooking me up to everything, like IV after IV after like medicine and like just more medicine and more information and I was just sitting there with the neck brace on and I was just answering any question that I could so yeah basically that is what happened so yeah um so yeah I'm gonna pull up some pictures actually um from when I was in the hospital when I was in the trauma center because once my mom got there and my dad and my brother, they ended up all coming around the same time because um, my dad, they work out of um, Washington, D.C., like in that area, and we were in like Washington. Um, but so basically when they got there, I don't even, I can't even remember whether they did, they had to do two surgeries, basically. The one was the next morning, that was the major one, and the first one was like, they don't put you under for that, but it's like an operation, and they had to put two screws below my knee so that they can connect like wires with a weight that hangs off the end of my hospital bed so it keeps my leg straight so like if I didn't have it my leg would be all like messed up like waiting for surgery because we had to wait for a certain surgeon as well so um they had to like connect this weight and they had to like keep it keep my leg straight basically but they had to drill two screws into my bone to do that so yeah, that was fun. But they literally used a regular drill you would find in your garage to do that. So that was kind of scary. They just pulled it up and I was like, oh, this is what's happening. Yeah, this is this is what's happening. So yeah, there was honestly, and when you're going through that, you make no choices. They just do what they want. They're just like, we're gonna, we're gonna drill holes in your leg. You're gonna be fine. Like, and you're, you just have to let them do it. You just gotta let them do what they gotta do. If you want a leg, you gotta let them do what you gotta do. So yeah, that was, um, traumatic, but, um, I will pull up some pictures. I actually, as soon as my mom got to the hospital and my brother and like, of course, being me, the first thing I say is, where's my phone? Like, anyone have my phone? Like, where's my phone? Like, I'm like all drugged. Like, where's my phone? Like, so my mom gave me my phone, um, and I took this video and put it on my snap story. So yeah, that was not a good idea because first off, I was like really drugged. I had a Snapchat filter on my face, so I was looking real cute there. But um, put it on my story, I of course couldn't like answer anybody at that moment. So now everyone, all of my friends, knows that I'm like in the hospital, and then they see this Snapchat on my story of me in a neck brace in the hospital and that's all they get because I wasn't answering because I was really messed up but we I will just show you guys this video but yeah that's just me taking a video of myself in the hospital bed with my neck brace on that I put on my snapchat story uh, I probably scared the hell out of 
every single one of my friends. I feel really bad, so sorry about that. <clears throat> but yeah, um, <laughs> basically, oh, I ha also have a picture of the screws. Okay, also, this might get really not graphic, but kind of graphic, so if you're like, don't like that, you might just want to skip past this little couple seconds, or yeah, I'll probably tell you how many seconds, but um, this is the weight, so if this glare goes away, I'm going to focus that in here, we're going to zoom in. Okay, so this is my leg, and those are the screws that are below my knee, and that is the weight that is hanging off my hospital bed. So you can see that it's connected to a string and it there's just two screws on like in my knee and yeah so that's how they kept my leg straight. Yeah, fun stuff. But um I had to sleep like that for an entire night, so that was very painful and interesting. But um I also had a terrible dream that night cuz you know, once they put you on all these medicines cuz they had you on every single thing they can have you in the hospital on top of like two muscle relaxers, like oxycotton, oxycodone, morphine, Dilaudid, like just like, every single Percocet. Like you could just like anything they had, they were like, let's just give it to her. She's she's in a lot of pain. So yeah, that was fun. Um, never felt so messed up in my life, but yeah. Um, oh, also I'll show you a picture of what the cars looked like. Okay, so the little green car or like it's like bluish green that is my car and the lexus is the other guy's car so we got pushed into a median and it's kind of like on a hill you can see how his car is kind of up the hill but yeah um i'm gonna see if i can insert any other hold on let me see there's a picture of them towing my car away so you can kind of see like how messed up my car was in the front so you can just imagine like my foot being or my leg being there when it got smashed inwards but yeah um that was that um yeah uh ended up staying in the hospital for a week um i think like the second night or like the third night or well the next day i had surgery so I got into the accident on Friday. I had surgery Saturday morning. So they like took me into the surgery room and uh, yeah, of course I have my um, cartilage piercing. Uh, it was a ring at the time. I literally just changed this out like yesterday. Like I like to change them a lot, but it was a ring and I just got it done and they had to take it out. And that was so painful because it was so swollen. They couldn't get it out. It was just, and they were like, if you leave it in, you have a chance of getting shocked. Like I, I was like, we just couldn't get this earring out. And like, my mom tried, the nurses tried, my, like, I just, like, couldn't get it out. And it was, like, stressing me out. So they literally, like, put me under anesthesia and then pried it out of my ear. So when I got up from surgery the next day and I had, like, none of my earrings in and, like, my cartilage piercing was swollen as I don't even know what, but it was, like, so swollen. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that was another fun experience. But all I remember is being, like brought down in my hospital bed for surgery and all of a sudden doctor comes in and I'm just out they like secretly gave me that anesthesia because like they definitely like I had an IV in and they put it through my IV I thought they're gonna do one of those like mask things because I've gotten anesthesia before when I was really really little and it was like a mask but um yeah they just like put it in my IV and I was just out like I was just out like a light and I woke up next like however long it took I don't even know what time it was but just woke up in the recovery room and then I barely remember that and then I remember waking back up in my hospital room and my cousin was there um but yeah from there on out I was like a mess they had me on every single drug I was coming off of anesthesia um my leg was of course they put a rod a titanium rod between my bone so like inside of it and they secured it with two screws by my knee and one at the top and yeah I was expecting to have a huge like line scar or something up and down my leg but my scars are actually really little um there I'll I might insert like a video like of me showing you my scars because like right now they're like more healed and stuff but like when I I can like pull the picture when I um got out of the hospital like I just had like I had like staples in like the scar areas they're literally about like this big and they just went in through the knee sorry 
they hammered it up and secured it at the top of the screw and then I just have like two screw holes on the right side of my leg so yeah also the fun part about this was that I um I spray tan every single week uh I do it like religiously it's just the thing I like to do um I like being tan and I hate sun damage so I spray tan instead of sitting out in the sun and baking my skin just because I don't tan so why would I try so yeah, um, I spray tan, and I had put on a fresh spray tan the day before I got into this car accident. So when they put all the hospital tape on me, and when they would take it off, it would also take off my spray tan. So the doctors thought my skin was like, they thought they were like ripping off my skin, but really it was my spray tan. Um, again, pre-warning, this is graphic. This is really graphic, actually. Um... But I want to show you um, my leg after they pulled off the bandages and pulled off my spray tan because it's really funny. But uh, I have like these lines on my leg. Um, so yeah, that is my leg. Um, <laughs> they were like square bandages over top of my scar and where they had the stitches. But um, yeah, that's my skin. Literally, I had to deal with that for like two weeks after because I had to like scrub that off. Couldn't even scrub where I had like the scars, so it just looked really terrible. I also had one at the top of my thigh, so <sighs> fun, fun. I just had like squares all over myself. Oh yeah, also when I woke up from surgery, they had taped a tube, like I guess they had a tube in my mouth where I was breathing and they taped like... A piece of hospital tape or surgical tape whatever it's called to the side of my mouth and then they ripped that off and then I had a line in my face as well so I was looking real stylish in that uh, hospital bed there um, here I look really bad in this I apologize but um look at the glare of my phone you can I don't know if you can see it in this you probably can't but um it the line was just like on my face and I also had like burns from my seatbelt like on my neck and on my waist so yeah, I was a mess. Um, but yeah, of course, also, I'm allergic to, like, everything. Uh, I was allergic to the hospital sheets, and, like, I don't know, I was just reacting to every single thing in the hospital, and, yeah, I, I like, I had to, like, bring my own sheets from home because I was getting, like, a rash all up and down my back, and, of course, uh, we could just add to this, the hospital the air conditioning broke so it was like 80 degrees in this hospital when I'm like having like hot flashes because I just had surgery and like I don't even know why but I was having like hot flashes and I was sweating and then I was cold one minute and then I was hot and then I was cold and it, the hospital was like burning up and so I literally like want like I was like dying like I was literally like that was probably the worst thing was like being in the hospital after like surgery not being able to like get up or do anything yourself because I have a broken leg and I like literally on so many drugs that I can't even lift my own weight up just sitting there like hot as well, I don't even know what just so hot they had to like get they had like ice bags that they were bringing me like on the hour just so they can lay it on like my head and my back and my body because I was like so hot and like one of these days I caught a fever so that was even worse because like I was just like a mess like I was sick and it was just terrible and I had visitors throughout the week so that actually kept me like sane and like happy a little bit um I, like my friends came and saw me I'm like so thankful for that I they couldn't even describe like everyone who came to the hospital like I could have cried I was so happy that they came because I was like all I wanted was like my friends there and I just like I didn't want to be in this hospital like I like couldn't do anything like physical therapy would come in and try and get me up and it was I can't even like sit up like myself like they had to like lift me up and then my first thing was to do was to like stand and like I couldn't do that like I literally would get out of bed and I would just like I would like fall like they had someone there his name is Peter Peter, if you're watching this probably not but hey um he had to tie a belt around my waist and hold me up so yeah basically I was not doing anything myself I was just hanging there like I was just chilling like head was going this way eyes were going to the back of my head like I looked like a zombie like I was just like can't do it and so that was the first day but then I made progress throughout the days and like m like the happiest thing I like the best thing I ever did was literally like walked to the door of my hospital room like I was so happy that I like I had help like Peter was definitely 
holding the belt up and then I was, it was definitely, I would not do it on myself, but it was like to get there at least. Of course my camera just stopped recording because it's like so long. Sorry, this is like such a long story time. But anyway, um, I ended up having to like by the end of the week, like walk down this hallway with like my walker and my crutches and like walk up these fake stairs and like show therapy that I could do that in order to go home and stuff. But back to the like other stuff. Um, my friends came and visited me, like they stayed, they brought me like cards and like balloons and flowers. I had like so much stuff in that hospital. I was like so like happy that like everyone was sending me stuff and like my family came and saw me and like my like cousins and my brother and like just everybody came to see me and it just like made me so happy. But yeah, um, I don't know. Uh it was a mess. Um by the end of the week, they had to take all, they take me off of all the drugs because I was a mess. And when they stopped all the drugs, I ended up throwing up because I guess not a withdrawal, but like once you're on all those narcotics and they just immediately stop them, it just, you're a mess. So I was just like throwing up from all the medicines and then them immediately stopping them. I was just like, like I was a mess. But <clears throat> they ended up stopping them and like that was probably the worst day of the week and then the next day I was like progressively getting de like better and better and I was just all I wanted to do was leave that hospital because like the best recovery place is literally at home and I just needed to be home and I just wanted to go home so badly and I ended up like being able to go home after I showed physical therapy that I could manage myself without like doctors and nurses every single hour so yeah because literally every hour they would come in and they would like take your vitals and or they would like give you another IV, give you more fluid. They would like just check everything and it was so annoying. What a fun time, I just, I was over it. I didn't want anyone to talk to me after that week. I was like, I just wanna be like on my own. But yeah, basically they took me home in an ambulance. Ambulance people carried me upstairs in my house once I got there in a chair and they put me upstairs and I swear I think I was like locked upstairs, not locked, but like I was upstairs for like a week cause like getting down the stairs of my house, not a thing I wanted to do. Um, <clears throat> that took a while actually, but um, I guess maybe a couple days after surgery, it was like my friend's graduation party and I had like just gotten out of the hospital and I really, really wanted to go. Like I was like, I need to go to the graduation party. Like I want to go. Like I was so sad if I didn't want to, like I just, I needed to see my friends. And so my parents and my brother, my dad and my brother actually carried me down in my wheelchair, 15 flight, like 15 stairs, not flights, but one flight of stairs. They carried me down. They got me to the graduation party. I stayed there for a little bit. And then once I got home, they, carried me back up the stairs so <laughs> happy they did that but after that I mean I was just like in recovery mode my main goal was to like get to school and school is here like school is Los Angeles like I was like had a start date like November like 7th or something and I was moving in on the 31st like it was my main goal to like get there like that's what I needed to do so literally went to physical therapy every single like time I had it I would go and I would like do what they asked me to do like I would push myself to do it like it was so painful getting through this recovery like I can't even describe how much pain I was in after the fact and I was just I was just going through it like as soon as I thought I didn't need the wheelchair I didn't need it like I was like done I was like I don't need this and I would like get my crutches and I would like walk everywhere like I would try and do whatever I could like after that it was like one crutch like I was done like I just I wanted to go to school I wanted to be like doing like I was like literally about to turn 18 in September like I'm 18 now and I turned it September 26 was my birthday and just imagine this is like the beginning of August and like I needed my goal my main goal like I made this for myself was to be able to walk without crutches on September 26 like by then and like the hospital told me like I wasn't gonna be able to walk for like three months or like two months three months something like that and like I was like no I was like no not happening not for me I had like goals like I had stuff to do I was like no not happening so I literally like did what I needed to do and I just like crutches like once I was down to one crutch I was like crutching with one like under my arm and I was like limping with the other like, I was just like a mess but like I needed to walk like I was like no way I was like no way this is stopping me from doing anything but like Throughout this time, like, I was just, like, 
I wanted to do everything I couldn't and it was just so painful like I and everyone would ask me everyone would be like so like how's your leg like how's your leg like how are you feeling like does your leg hurt and like that question got so old because yes my leg hurt the entire time my leg still hurts like it like it hurts but I wouldn't like I, I think I would just be like yeah like I'm fine like, it, like it's okay like I'm fine like that was my main thing I was like I'm fine like I'm fine like I'm okay but like really I was not okay my leg hurt so badly I was like it was it was a mess it was like terrifying and I just like I'm such like I'm like a gym a holic why would we call it like I love the gym like I couldn't even go to the gym like I love working out it's like therapy for me it's like I go to the gym put my headphones on different world I'm literally in a world by myself and it's like therapeutic like I love to work out and like literally from the hospital like I like lost all the muscle in my right leg because uh, they did surgery and like I couldn't even like flex my quad because it hurt so badly I couldn't even do any of that I couldn't even like didn't have the strength to even like lift it up like I would go to physical therapy and I would have to like lift up my leg and I couldn't like I couldn't even like use that muscle like it was just and I like was already on like a like I've been doing macro counting for a year now if you watch my other video you know I macro count but and I've had been building muscle for so long just for this to like happen and like it all get like lost like I just I felt like I did it for nothing and like I just had been working so hard to just like change my life and like my fitness goals were just so high and I just like felt like I just lost everything I like built up to do like I was I don't know I was like so upset like I was like so sad and like I like thank god I had like my friends there that's all I can say is like thank god I had my friends there because I was I would have been a mess if they didn't help me through this and it was terrible because like most of them were going to college like they were literally about to leave for college like two weeks two or three weeks after I got out of the hospital like I didn't even have them for that long like luckily I had like my close like a couple of my close friends like you know who you are like I had you like thank god because like I wouldn't have gone through it like I like I don't know I was a mess but my main goal was to walk and get to school and I did it I literally once I like at some point like I literally got rid of the crutches and I was like no I'm not using these and I would literally walk like I had saggy pants that's his own like, like literally I would walk with like a zombie walk like my pants were like down low and I had to like, keep them up with my legs like if you know how like people walk like that like just like I don't know like I was walking like that I was dragging my leg behind me and I was like limping through like I don't know I was if I went anywhere it was just me limping for like a month and a half like I couldn't walk normal I like tried and I like couldn't do it but I don't know I did what I did and by September 26 I had the limp but I could like it was my goal was to be able to walk without crutches and I was doing it I wasn't doing it correctly we had to correct my walk but I was doing it so that was my main goal and by then I had my walk down and then a month after that which is when I was leaving and I did what I did to strengthen my leg and I was by October 31st like my limp was like gone like it went away like I didn't even have the limp anymore and it was like so grateful I was like so happy and like here a couple times if I do too much or if I like I walk to school every day and I walk a lot here because I don't have a car anymore because my car got smashed but um I like sometimes the limp limp will come back I'll like but it'll only last a little bit and like I mean it does hurt like yeah it does hurt if you're asking a question yes it does hurt but um I go through it um everything happens for a reason not that I think I was supposed to get in that car accident but everything happens for a reason and I feel like totally different person now I just I like learned a lot from that like anything can happen like you can like literally anything can happen like you don't know who's getting into a car accident you don't know like I literally could have like so many worse things could have happened to me and I'm so grateful nothing did like that was terrible but like I didn't like I didn't lose my life so I'm like grateful for that but like anything could happen anything could happen to anyone at any point and you just have to like you gotta live your life to the fullest and you have to be grateful for what you have and yeah could have been a whole lot worse even though I'm still dealing with it gotta get that screw out I made it too long for my leg gotta gotta keep going with it but I feel like everything happens for a reason and I will get through it this it's gonna be a come up I'm trying to just live my life out here and I'm even more dedicated to fitness now that I'm in like rehab with my leg like I just I don't know we'll see but that was my story of 
how I got into a car accident, what happened, how I broke my femur, if you wanted to know. Um, I've actually been meaning to make this video, but I didn't want to make it while I was still like in the recovery phase, like hardcore, like at the beginning, because it was like such a sensitive topic for me. I didn't even want to bring it back up in my life, if that makes sense. I didn't want to like just bring every memory back up. But now that it's been like five or six months almost, like I can definitely talk about it a lot more. And yeah, so... Thank you for listening to my long story. Sorry if that was like so long, but I wanted to explain everything and what I went through. And if you've been through something like that, you know it's traumatic and you know it just affects your life in a whole different level. So thank you for watching. Um, if you want to see more, you can like subscribe, drop a like, whatever. Um, you can go to my Instagram at Emmy Combs, E M M Y C O M B S S. And yeah. Thanks for watching. I will see you later. Bye.